Hello everyone, welcome back. I told you guys I would do a second video for you guys only because you had to wait, you know, uh, pretty long for the last video that I did. And I figured, eh, why not throw an extra one at you guys, right? All right, so I've got uh, a video for you this time. And uh, this one here is a, the next instrument going to Mars this year. Uh, I believe it's between May and June uh, that it's going to be launched. And it's called the Insight. Now, here it is right here, Insight Lander Probing the Martian Interior. Now, first of all, I'm going to show you well, at least give you a brief description about what this thing's going to do. It's like three, three different points that, um, you know, uh, in instruments. I mean, basically, they got a seismometer right here, and you can see it right there. And it's got its own ribbon wire, and it's got another one, which is basically a thermo sensor. Now, I'm going to read to you what it's going to be doing, okay, and, and uh, what they're actually looking for. But then I'm going to tell you the more speculative side to it. I think there's more going on than meets the eye and why I come up to this conclusion. All right, so briefly, I'm just going to get into this. I'm not going to go into this too long, but uh, InSight has three instruments there that are designed to look at the deep interior of Mars and learn about the planet's geological activity, warmth, and elements of its evolution, according to NASA, right? So the seismic uh, experiment for interior structure, or the size, I guess, will detect seismic waves from meteor uh, impacts, magma movements inside the planet, or Mars quakes. Secondly, the uh, heat flow and physical properties probe, or the HP3, will burrow about fi uh, 5 meters, or 16 feet, uh, into the surface. Its main job is to sense heat underground. Okay, uh, the third one is the, ro the Rotation and Interior Structure Experiment, or RISE, will aim to provide more information about the composition of the Martian core. It will keep a uh, careful track of where uh, the lander is located, and from that information, discern any wobbles in the orbit of, of Mars as the planet orbits the sun. The composition of the core will influence the degree of the type of oscillation Mars experiences. Okay, I have a little problem with the second one, because the heat flow and physical properties probe. Okay, we'll burrow about 5 meters, 16 feet. Okay, I can't imagine. It's almost like it's just below the surface where any sunshine coming from the sun itself it would be like, you know, it probably wouldn't sense that heat because you go down so many feet, right? And it's like, there's like a certain amount that, uh, you know, once you get down, I think it's like uh, 15 to 25 feet. Once you get into that area, you're basically at a like a constant temperature, right? At least for here on Earth. So how is that in any way going to uh, sense other heat? I mean, it's it's almost impossible to get it from the actual core as far as heat that way. Um, so I'm kind of confused about that a little bit. Um, not that it's impossible or why they're doing it. I get that. Um, but like I said, I mean, if you would just do a few inches under the ground, you know, well, clearly, you know, that's not going to do any good because you'd be influenced by the heat from the sun. But 16 feet, it seems like it's a little too much, and that it, and, but yet too little to measure anything from the actual, uh, you know, any kind of, you know, soil warmth. So I'm kind of concerned or at least a little baffled by that now the the seismometer i get but again they said that there was really no tectonic plates if you guys remember you just read on all of the stuff they've been talking about for, for years now and they they said there was no tectonic plates now they're trying to you know look for that maybe they're just unsure and this is the reason why they're doing that right okay so now i'm going to jump up here real quick now funny enough you got the phoenix lander which is up here in the top left i'm going to go ahead and zoom into that Right there. Now, the Phoenix Lander, and this is exactly thermal and evolved gas analyzer. Now, we all know that they found other gases, uh, including uh, methane. So there's almost like if you look at the gases that, you know, they found on this planet, it's like it's basically some building blocks for life, right? Um, even if it's just simple organics. Now, what's funny, though, is you got the Phoenix here, and that was in, I believe that was 2008. Yeah, 2008. Um, okay, but check this out. Viking Lander 1 to the right up here in the blue, Viking Lander 2 back in 1975, 76, right? Okay, Pathfinder. Pathfinder was actually back in 1997 with the Sojourner, which I just showed you in the last video, 1997. Opportunity here, and the one all the way to the right is Spirit. That was in 2004. You got Curiosity 2010. I mean, I'm sorry, 2012. Now you've got the insight. Now, where have you seen this map before and where have I showed you? Well, let's go back to here because I want to give you guys this page. It's a PDF. And this is from basically uh, Dr. John Brandenburg's work, 
which uh, uh, he actually says in, back in 1941 that they observed two large flashes coming from Mars's upper atmosphere. Huh. Let's go back to that. Let me show you. You've seen the colored map of this, but check this out. Explosion right here. Nuclear impact. Impact, nuclear impact right here. So one here, one here. Cydonia region, which is right there. And then, of course, you got Galaxias. Oh, uh, Galaxia. <laughs> but anyway, so all of these rovers and landers, hmm, funny enough, are all, here's one explosion here, which was a smaller one, and over here was supposed to be a larger one. Funny enough that all of these rovers and landers just happen to be in this area. Why do you suppose that is? Is it just because it's just p pure coincidental? Good possibility. I don't believe it is. And I don't believe that these, these instruments on board this thing are uh, anything... You know, I think they're doing the experiments, don't get me wrong, but I think they're looking for something more than that. Is it possible, like we've been, you know, saying, well, is it possible the inhabitants went underground? Or when the planet was alive, is it possible that there was life both on top and below the planet? Um, they may be looking for that. I think so. And, of course, this is nothing more than pure speculation. You guys know that. Uh, but that's just my thoughts on it. I want your thoughts on it. Tell me what you think. Because I'm looking at this and I'm going... Is it just mere coincidental, merely coincidental that all of these landers, these two landers here, the Pathfire and the lander, and of course you've got rover, rover, and then you've got the rover, and then of course now you're going to have the InSight in 2018, also going to be landing there. And like I said, nuclear explosion, nuclear explosion. How ironically, again, or is it just coincidentally that these all happen to be there, and this, this might have been all water at some point. That's why it's blue. And, of course, this is basically a depth map anyway, as far as how high, you know, uh, ground level is and so on and so forth. But still, they claim that this water was here. It was actually water here at some point. And this, of course, was all a land mass, all in the different greens and reds and yellows, right? So let me know what you guys think. Is it just purely coincidental? Is it, uh, is it more than that? Do you guys—I mean, I'm just basing this on this. We've seen tons of things in these photos that show something intelligently made, right? So if this stuff was in rubble, meaning it's damaged, it's strewn all over the place, he claims that back in 1941, these two large explosions in Mars' atmosphere, it never did hit the ground. It was just in the air. So it's a little weird that it was up in the atmosphere. Maybe they, wore, they had a war with each other. Maybe some other uh, outer, you know... Uh, you know, I'm going to call them aliens, you know, other people that other than th that lives on that planet on Mars. Uh, was this something that, you know, uh, it was an outside interference or a war with them? I don't know. But when you look at all of the stuff and you go and it would explain a lot, because a lot of people have asked me, hey, Chris, I know you're showing these different things, these anomalies on the surface, but wouldn't they be eroded or rusted and turned to dust by now? I don't know. If you were to think about it in 1941, what is that like 75 years ago? I don't know. So maybe nothing, everybody, anything would be a totally obliterated, right? It would still be around. Kind of like we had these nuclear accidents here on Earth, you know, like Chernobyl, all of these. And now it's pretty much, mm, I don't know if I'd build a house there, but it's safe enough to walk through there for a short time with no problem and then get out. So, you know, that's what it's, you know what I mean? So it's, it's making you wonder. All of a sudden, they all happen to be right here in this whole area where Dr. John Brandenburg talks about how those two nuclear explosions. You guys give me your thoughts. Because the way I see it, I'm not seeing it that way, man. I'm seeing it as like, I mean, you got a, you got a, a seismometer right here, and you've got yourself a, and it's only 16 feet in the ground, guys. I'm thinking to myself, okay, so maybe they're trying to find the steady temperature of the planet, which makes sense, right? Um, I don't think the storms are as much or, or is, is frequent, or the weather is as bad as they say it is. I don't believe that's the case at all. Um, I've got a video coming up that talks about liquid on the ground, and uh, it's a lot like here on Earth. And if that's true, if you're seeing pathways or some kind of uh, water coming down, you would think these storms would be basically drying up any kind of liquid on the surface. Uh, the sand would be covering up from these, these massive uh, sandstorms that they talk about. Uh, I mean, but anyway, guys, give me your thoughts. Tell me what you think. Um, I'm seeing... I believe that the test that they're doing is correct, and I believe that they are doing them, but I think it's for more of a, more in-depth reasons. Um, I think they're still trying to find life there. I think they've seen the structures, and they're trying to figure out, is there any sounds underground? Think about it. If you couldn't find something, and you believe it burrowed underground, when you look for it with radar, is it possible this is more than just a seismometer, and maybe it's a radar as well? 
I mean, after all, there was another, uh, I don't know if it was the, uh, I don't know if it was ESSA that was um, planning on sending a probe that had uh, a ground penetrating radar that would also go into the ground about 100 feet in the ground. What's the point of it, guys? Why do we use radar here? Well, we've been looking at a lot of ancient civilizations that were buried, like the Mayans, buried in these huge rainforests and these big forests and stuff like that. And we're finding all kinds of structures. Hey, guys, this is the way I look at it. We are basically learning how to walk. We're a civilization just crawling right now. And we're finding things that we never knew possible. Ancient civilizations we didn't even know existed here on this planet, uh, whether they be uh, underground. Uh, I mean, you know, these uh, ancient structures that are in the uh, Japanese oceans. I mean, I think we're just learning about ourselves and we're kind of like, you know, stepping out for the first time in our neighborhood going, wow, this is pretty unique. I never knew this. And I believe that's what we're doing. We just want to simply learn more about it. Anyway, guys, I'm not going to make this too long. Tell me your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think is going on. Because like I said, coincidental that, you know, these landers and rovers are here. And then we've got this right here. Uh, showing that this is where the, the actual, you know, nuclear impacts were at. And funny enough, all these landers and uh, rovers are all in these areas. Now, they are spread, spread quite a bit apart because you can see uh, uh, Valles Marineras is right here, actually. Let me see, right uh, here. All right here. So that's quite large. In fact, they even said that I believe scale size was roughly around the width of the United States. Uh, Valles Marinera. So, um, so that's pretty large in itself. So, if you figure the United States is fitting right in here, that's pretty darn large. Um, that's a pretty good distance away, uh, or at least a span anyway. This swath of land. So, anyway, guys, tell me what you think. Like I said, I'm going to jump off this. Just wanted to give you another one to to you know to check out. Tell me what you guys think. Is it is it nothing more than just simple experiments they're doing here, or is there much more to it? Is it uh, uh, you know, is it still what we're thinking? In other words, they found ancient civilization on Mars. Are uh, they still looking for the occupants uh, or the inhabitants of this planet? Um, do they think that they actually weren't on the ground? And this is the reason what they're searching for, to see if this sounds kind of like what they do with the moon. Remember, they, saw, they, they sent a uh, seismometer on the moon. And then they, they purposely, you know, uh, uh, crashed the, uh, the rockets onto the lunar surface. What were they looking for? Then they found that the, bang, the bell rang for like days, uh, you know, and people go, well, how the hell do they know it rang? There's no sound in, in a vacuum, right? Well, it's not hearing it itself. It's, it's actually being sensed by the seismometer. But regardless, what are they looking for? What were they looking for on the moon? Well, there you go. Is it possible they're doing the same thing here? Give me your thoughts. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Always appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one.